station. This is Rachel Crane with CNN. How do you hear me? I have you loud and clear on board the space station. Great. Uh, how does a girl from Beaconsfield, Iowa, with a population of less than 20, become the commander of the International Space Station? I don't know. I think it's kind of a miracle, actually. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, the dedication and work ethic that I learned growing up on the farm, um, maybe in a, a healthy dose of stubbornness, uh, kept me on a path that um, I w got very lucky on in the end and was selected to be an astronaut. So it's, it's pretty amazing, really quite unbelievable. Now you've been to space several times now. So what's the first thing that you do when you get back to Earth? Do you have a routine of some sort? Shower is nice. I <laughs> fear we have to take just a wiped bath, baths uh, with wipes and towels and stuff. And so showers are nice and food is nice. I like to be able to cook for myself. So food is a nice thing to have when you get back home. So you've broken just about every record for a female astronaut, uh, for a U.S. female astronaut out there. So was that your goal or is that just sort of an added bonus to all of this? It was really just an added bonus. I've been uh, lucky enough, privileged enough to be in uh, some very unique times and, and uh, was able to do some very special things. Uh, conducting spacewalks, being the first commander, all of that was uh, somewhat based on timing and opportunities. Um, so it's, it's uh, just a real honor for me to be able to represent NASA and each in these new areas. record that you break, I mean, how does that make you feel? Well, I guess I don't think about the records themselves too much, but uh, it definitely, uh, when I do think about them, I think about all the people that make, make it possible. There's an incredible number of people uh, at NASA who make it possible. On April 24th, you will have broken another incredible record. You will have spent more days uh, in cumulative days in space than any other U.S. astronaut. What's the next record for you? I, I'm not sure. I'm sure there's somebody out there keeping track, but I'm not sure what the next one will be. So your stay on the International Space Station was just extended by three months, but how long in space is too long? I mean, do you think that our bodies and brains could actually handle a mission to Mars now having spent so long on the International Space Station? Actually, that's exactly why we're spending this time up here, is to find out what the limitations are, where do we need to compensate for things, whether it's uh, from a psychological perspective or from a physi physiological perspective. Those are some of the questions that are really key for us that we're trying to learn here on board the space station so that when we get ready to go to Mars, we will know that we are capable and ready and and it'll just be part of the evolution of getting there. So the late great John Glenn last flew to space when he was 77 years old. Do you have any indication of if you'll be still flying to space when you're 77, Peggy? If I'm not dead. So then this is not your last mission to space, you say? I have no idea. It, you know, there are lots of young people out there who need to have flight opportunities too. And so uh, we don't have too many opportunities these days. And I may have to step back for a while. So that's just the way it is. But, but I'm loving working for NASA. And uh, I worked for NASA for 10 years before I was lucky enough to be selected as an astronaut. I've always said I've never had a real job because I've done what I wanted. So Peggy, your last NASA. spacewalk, you worked on a future docking port for commercial space missions. Would you go to space on a commercial mission? Absolutely. I think our commercial providers are working very hard, striving to get up here, hopefully within the next year or so, uh, with their first test flights. It's going to be an important time period for them. and. Um, I know they're working very hard on getting their vehicles and uh, launchers uh, human rated. So we're looking forward to welcoming on board the space station um, new vehicles. And I think that's, that's going to be really special for us. I think it's going to be the next step in evolution of commercializing space. 
and expanding our footprint uh, into the solar system. Peggy, what advice would you give to young girls out there who want to follow in your footsteps and hope to go to space one day? Well, I think uh, picking any field in math, science, or engineering and, and picking one that you love because you really need to excel at it. Also working on people skills. It's important in an environment like this to be able to work in, collab in, in a collaborative way, not only with the crew that we have on board, but the crew that we have on, on the ground. Uh, the, the, the whole team is important. So those interpersonal skills are just as important as the technical skills. And uh, for the crew on board, I think maybe even more important. So work on all those things, but that my, the biggest piece of advice I would say is don't underestimate yourself. Uh, push yourself, challenge yourself to do more than you think you can. You have stacked up one of the most impressive resumes at NASA. Um, uh, with all that you've done, what memory sticks out to you most, Peggy? Well, other than actual space flight, being in space, I think probably the most uh, uh, challenging and interesting position I've had was being chief of the astronaut office. Uh, it was uh, very much a work in collaborating with other organizations at NASA, and uh, I really think it helped me develop a lot as a leader. So I think that was probably, uh, other than space flight, my, my my and is there any advice time. that you would like to impart on the people who have already bought tickets to space, commercial tickets to space? Enjoy it. It's going to be a blast. You're going to love every second of it. Um, just this whole environment, being able to be in zero gravity and move around uh, at will is just amazing. It is, it's very freeing and it gives you a whole other perspective on our planet below. Uh, so I, I just think everyone will enjoy it. I, absolutely. 100%. Thank you so much, Peggy. Really appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you, you Rachel. Sir.